Okay, now it's time to start the work on our sale for our QSC Regalo project. I've had to move this party uh, from my workbench and my workshop to my dining table simply because I've got more room like this. Uh, I want you to take your sailcloth. Uh, like I said, we're using one ounce ripstop nylon on this project. And I want you to lay it out nice and flat on the largest surface that you have. Um, I've used canned vegetables to help lay it nice and flat. It's going to be almost impossible for you to get it completely flat. I don't want you to try to stretch it. Just get it as flat as possible. Now our total, total width of our sail as we cut it is going to be 23 and a half inches. I'm sorry, 43 and a half inches. So you want to find a center that gives you uh, 21 and a half inches to each side so that we can work with it here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this here, but I've actually found the place that I want to start and I've drawn a straight line as perpendicular to the surface that I have over here as I possibly can. And I've gone up, I've drawn this line just with, with my Sharpie and I've gone up 26 inches. Okay? And then from there, I'll move this out of my way. These dimensions are going to be pretty important, so I want you to be as fussy as you can about this. But from our baseline, our zero line, you know, we're going this way to 26 inches. I want you to make another tick with your marker from the beginning zero mark, go up to 10 and 5 eighths inches, as I've done here, and I don't know that it's going to show up on camera, but I've made a mark 10 and 5 eighths inches. Now from there, again, getting my material as flat as possible so that I'm not distorting it, I'm going to use a square and I'm going to try to line it up as straight as I can. Now that's where I have this piece of scrap aluminum. This is just uh, one inch by sixteenth inch aluminum that I often buy these things either to, to bend landing gear out of or you know various projects and it's cheap and this serves as a great straight edge. Anyway, I want you to line up on your ten and five eighths mark and just bring this down it's kind of slippery, so be careful. But you want to bring that down square. And I can go back and I can check it with this side uh, to try to make sure we've got the same thing. Because we want to be as square with this as we possibly can. And looks like I've about got it. Okay. Now, we're looking at our 10 and 5 eighths inch up portion, and we're going to use our tape measure, and we're going to measure out 21 and a half inches, and we're going to make just a simple tick mark on our straight line. We'll do the same thing here, 21 and a half inches, and we'll make a tick mark there. Now we have references. We can use our straight edge to connect all of these. We've got top, I'm sorry, nose and trailing edge and then we've got one wing tip here and one wing tip here. You can take your straight edge at this point and connect all of your lines. That's what I'm going to do here and I'm going to try to keep everything nice and flat. And if you're going to air here, air slightly to the outside, I'd rather you be a little too large on this than too small. So I'm just going to make a line there. And a good way, before you even make these lines, a good way to check your, your uh, you know, how, or how uh, 90 degrees off that uh, mark was off the 10 and 5 eighths that you made, you should be able to take a tape measure and I'm going to draw this line here first. You should be able to take your tape measure and measure this. This is the trailing edge of our wing and if I measure it here I am at almost 24 inches. And that's what I want, about 24 inches. I'll measure it here as well and lo and behold 24 inches. Now I'll take my straight edge and go to the other side, 
Again, I'm not pulling this fabric enough to distort it. I'm just pulling it enough to just kind of keep it flat. And line it up. This is, uh, it's important that you get this fairly accurate. And I'll make this one next. And with your one yard of material, you will probably find, after you've made one of these or so, you'll probably find that you can actually get two sails, you know, for a second project out of this uh, same, you know, piece of material. What you see on the table here that I have is actually a little bit more than a yard because I bought remnants. Okay, and if I measure this, I should be right at about 26 and a half inches. And yes, I do. I'm at 26 and a half inches. And 26 and a half inches. So once you have this shape here, I'll cross in front of the camera once again. Once you have this shape here, you are ready to cut it out. Now I'm just going to set my frame on here. You'll notice if we start the frame at our cut mark for our trailing edge and we square everything up nicely, you'll notice, well, you might, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera. I can make it show up on the camera though. Let's see what we got. There we go. I'll adjust this down just a bit. You'll probably see that on our trailing edge of our wingtips, hey, we're overhanging our fabric. And that's okay, because we're going to luft each side. We're going to create slack on each side of the sail and bring the corners in, and that will give us the stability that we want with this project by lufting it. So, probably see that. I'll zoom back out. And... The next thing that we're going to do is, like I say, we're going to cut out this shape that we have here now, and then we will start uh, preparing to glue our frame to it. Okay, as you can see here now, back in the workshop, back on the workbench where I can do some gluing and such, we've got our shape out here. Remember, the, lead, or the trailing edge is the edge that is uh, that we we based our center mark on that is 10 and 5 8 inch for the back so that's our trailing edge and what we're going to do is we're going to glue just the spine that's this piece here we're going to glue just that piece onto our black line that's 26 inches long starting at the back now before you do this I highly recommend um, get yourself some wax paper. That's just what I've got here, just a little sheet of wax paper. And the reason that I'm doing this is uh, I don't want to glue this to my work surface. So I'm going to lay this down, try to set everything all up here, and keep this center just like that. Nice and flat. We're going to use our amazing goop glue and all we're going to do provided I can get this open since the last time I used it all we're going to do here is put a nice little bead on just the spine we're going to run just a line down here we don't want to get too messy with it I'm just going to run a nice bead try to be as consistent as possible no gaps. And as usual, I'm laying down a little too much. Uh, I need to have my glasses so that I can see just how much. Anyway, that's about right. A little, little heavy in spots, but it's okay. Now we're going to start, like I said, the trailing edge back here. And we're going to use our black line, our 26 inch long black line to set our verticalness. And I look pretty good there for a 
lot of glue and a sloppy job, doesn't look too bad. So I'm just going to grab some weight here and I'm going to try to weight it down. And I don't really want to use that. It's a good idea to have your weights figured out before you start gluing stuff up. It doesn't look too bad. What am I going to use? Got an MO10 around here somewhere. Uh, all right. I'm just going to set that down. Now remember, we did not pull tight our cloth. We just laid it flat. That's not too bad. That should hold it all in place. Now this is the point where you're going to go off and do something for about two hours. Because we don't want to glue up our leading edges until this has set nicely and it takes about 24 hours for this to cure completely. We don't have to wait that long but we are going to wait about two hours before we move on to the next step. Okay at this point I've given the glue given time for the glue to dry where we've glued our spine to our sail and uh, now what we want to do is we want to we want to bring in the edges. I'm going to try to position this where you can see. I don't recommend you gluing the two leading edges at the same time. Uh, if you do, it's probably going to be an issue here. Uh, there we go. Okay. You can see as we lay it all flat here, <clears throat> this leading edge. You'll see that the uh, the leading edge dowel is extending past our material and that's okay. <clears throat> what you're going to do is grab your goop, amazing goop glue, and what I want you to do is to start up here where we can see it and I want you to lay a bead of glue down all the way down to the end of this spar, right? And then what we're going to do is you're going to have to elevate the framework off of the sail and then I want you to very carefully, you don't want to stretch it too tight, we're not trying to stretch it, just keep it flat. And then I want you to set it down just like that and I don't know if that's going to show well. There we go. But you basically want to pull in the sail from the sides until you get to a point where you're making contact and your sail is going all the way down to the end of that dowel. What that's going to give us is a little bit of luft in here, which is going to provide stability when this is in the air. Now I recommend you do one leading edge at a time. I have found with the goop, while it takes about 24 hours for it to set up, uh, after about two hours you can work with it. So again, apply your glue and then lay everything nice and flat and then slowly shift it over. See how I can move that before setting it down and then try to set it down so that the sail uh, comes up to the edge of our leading edge spar. And once you get that glued down into place, put some weight on it, let it set for a couple of hours and then you can come back and do the other side. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now and then we'll, uh, we'll do that all, glue that all up off camera. I'm going to do both sides and then we'll get started on how uh, we go about trimming the sail. Okay, once the glue has dried to our sail frame, um, <clears throat> all you have to do is uh, trim the excess away from the leading edges. Now, um, if you want for neatness, you can actually glue this again to the front. I don't know if that shows. Uh, you can wrap it around and glue it to the front or even all the way around to the bottom of those leading edge uh, strips. But I have had really good luck just, uh, you know, just leaving it glued just to the top. And if the glue should happen to pull away at any time, you can always go back in with some more glue or uh, you know even some medium CA and wick it under there and then let that dry. But all that's left to do, I've taken a fresh uh, straight edge razor, that's what I like to use in the workshop, and I'm just going to carefully trim away the excess. Just be careful that you don't cut into the wood. We're using basswood on this and 
That's what I'm using. And if you're not careful, you can cut into the basswood. You don't want to do anything to, to take that strength out. And I'm just, uh, just carefully trimming away, nice and flush. Um, I don't know how well it's showing up. I'm watching my blade instead of the camera. <laughs> but just all the way down, just like that. Anyway, that's what you're going to do next, is trim that all the way, and that's going to complete the sail. So, uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, start putting our components on our fuselage. Now, I don't remember if I showed you or not, but you'll see here, there's a hole here. And all that I've done, I, I, again, I may be just doubling up here, I don't recall if I covered it or not, but I've just drilled a quarter inch hole in this after mounting it. To my fuselage. I, I mounted the fuselage pylon to the sail, pushed it all the way up nice and flush, and I drilled a quarter inch hole, and then I just put a nylon uh, bolt through there with a nut. In this case I used a wing nut. And uh, yeah, with that our frame and our sail and our sail frame and all that stuff is all complete and we are ready to stuff electronics in it. We'll be talking uh, um, about the electronics that we're going to use shortly.